You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. I'm joined by Brad Hunt, and today's episode is with Matt Neville from Harvest Right Freeze Dryers. Uh, on this episode, we get into the the freeze drying, like all the options and all the ways that you can freeze dry all meals, the all the benefits, all the all the I don't know what you call them, all the um, perks of having one. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, we had some people message us at times to say, you know, I I'm not really interested in a freeze dryer. Yep. Um, I only go hunting for ten days, seven days out of the year, and. For other guys, you know, they hunt a lot. They they can see a, a, a major use for it. But some were like, eh, you know, I'll just buy my meals. The truth is, it doesn't take very many uh, seven to ten day hunts at buying a uh, a freeze dried meal from buying freeze dried meals to like cover the cost of a harvest right freeze dryer, especially with the cost of food right now. Mm-hmm. It's gotten real expensive for freeze dried meals. It seems and. You can uh, invest in a Harvest Right freeze dryer, and it can save you a ton of money in the long run. But more than that, more than that, we have just found that we're finding a lot more uses for the free, for this freeze dryer now beyond hunting, beyond the yeah, meals absolutely. for hunting. It's truly a, a prep, a food prep tool, and it's been huge. It's also been great because of all the snacks and all the healthy mm-hmm. treats that we've been able to ice cream. To- yeah, like <laughs> the options are are really varied and and uh, dynamic. And so you, there's so much you can do. Like it, we have chickens, and and they lay a lot in the summer, and then they kind of dry up a little bit in the winter. But we get tons and tons of eggs, yeah. and and a lot of y'all have more eggs than you can handle that have your own chickens, and so preserving them becomes uh, a goal and lampers has figured out that you can you can basically in the large freeze dryer i think you can get 84 eggs 84 and he, he's talking scrambled eggs yeah so he'll do a big scrambled egg ma- uh, batch 84 scrambled eggs yep. and then he'll freeze dry them and then put them in their serving bags and their mylar bags it's a great way and there's there's very few like eggs and potatoes skillets Eggs, hams, and potatoes, that kind of stuff, mm. freeze-dried. It hydrates so well, you can't even tell hardly, usually you can't tell that it, it that uh, that you that it was ever freeze-dried. And that's really been the case as well with almost everything we freeze-dry. Yeah. It used to be I could tell when things were freeze-dried. I don't know what they've done with the tech to this point, but you were even freeze-drying raw steaks, like an entire roast from a uh, an elk, and then just rehydrating it and then cooking it. And it's amazing what the freeze dryer can do now. That's a big deal when you don't want to put all your meat in the freezer. Yeah. Because your freezer might become might come unplugged. <laughs> the power might go out, which I dealt with last year, year and a half now ago. Yep. And you might feel it's a little daunting to cook it first and then freeze dry it like hamburger and think you don't have to cook it first. And the thing is, especially like with take hamburger, you put it in the freeze dryer and then you put as much water as you want and it will rehydrate to its natural state and it's not going to soak up any more extra water. But then when you cook it rehydrated, yes, it tastes fresh yes. because you just cooked it instead of it being pre-cooked. Yep. Although pre-cooked works excellent as well, but it's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to to uh, to to leverage the tool. Um, we have been doing lots of recipes with it, and Mark Livesey and Ryan Lampers, along with their wives Amy Livesey and Hillary Lampers, they have put they've been putting together basically recipes for snacks, for treats, for freeze dried meals, and uh, they've been coming out with some really excellent, delicious options yeah. to take all the guesswork out for you. And those are on their way. The course isn't quite finished yet, but they put a lot of work into it and they put something really good together. Everyone will want to get it. I think it's just, you you can leverage it for just about, just daily lifestyle. Yeah. It doesn't have to be for hunting. Exactly. Um, and in that course, there's recipes like pad thai for backcountry meals that so good. just crush so much of what's out there on the market. And you're making it with your all your own fresh wild caught ingredients, whatever you have that you choose to make it with. 
smoothie bites. We have been taking this Stealthy Hunter bone broth protein and mixing that. Mark has this recipe where he takes pineapple and greens or something yeah. and and the bone broth vanilla and mixing it together i do a peanut butter uh, and uh it's typically peanut butter and banana bone broth with the vanilla bone broth mixed together you take these little smoothies and you pour them into like these silicone ice trays and you put them into the the freeze, freeze dryer. dryer and you get these little bite smoothie size. bites yeah. you pop them in your mouth and they just melt in your mouth on our hunts, I have my wife makes these uh, blackberry raspberry um, smoothie bites out of the 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 bone broth protein from Stealthy. It's amazing. If you look at the bone broth protein profile, by the way, what Stealthy puts out, it's got all the goodies in it. It's yeah. stacked with so much nutritional value, and it tastes great. And unlike whey proteins, which you don't get the bloating, you don't bloat. You you yes. feel like you just ate a normal, you just ate normal food. There's no, there's nothing, no side effects and, right. and garbage that comes with it. So, man, I've just found we have just found you. You can take peaches, strawberries. Right now we're buying whole flats because they're all coming into season, and you can take. That fresh fruit that'll you got to do something with. Typically, yeah. we used to jam, jam it, and freeze and, it. Yeah, now. You can just cut it in two slices. A banana, you can just peel the banana and throw the whole thing yeah. on and throw it on the, the 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 freeze dryer and preserve so much uh, fruit. It's just an amazing tool. I I really can't recommend it enough. And with the new recipes coming out by uh Treeline Academy, I think you're just gonna really benefit from it. And I think, you know, if you have a family because initially you're like, oh, it's a little expensive, but but as you have a family, the amount of snacks, the ease of preserving meals, like it's a game changer. Instead of going out to eat, you just grab a bag off the shelf because it doesn't take up a lot of space, rehydrate it, and you have a family meal it's, right there. It's pretty amazing. It's like it's like a microwave. You stick it in there, yeah. shut the door, seal it, let it go, and uh, your f- food comes out. Throw it in the prep bags and mm-hmm. seal them shut. And there's just something that is uh, rewarding about preserving food and setting it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And the freeze dryer is a whole new tool for that that I never really considered as much. And we've been doing jar canning our food for years, which is which feels good because we got tons of cans of deer and elk yeah. and bear meat that we my family eats a lot of canned meat. But when you can freeze dry it, it weighs nothing. It stores more easily. There's no water in there. No jar can break. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very easy to reconstitute. So it's like fresh, and you can you can instead of going through all the work of canning, canning, canning all of that meat, right. you can just throw that raw chunk, the raw burger, into those bags, seal them up, and then just rehydrate that raw burger like that. You don't have to wait for meat to defrost. You just have to wait a few minutes for the meat to rehydrate, yep. which is easy. You just put in a bowl of water. Boom, and then cook it, drain it, and cook it, and you're good. And it's pretty remarkable. So mm-hmm. great tool. We can't recommend it enough. And right now, Harvest Ride is doing a massive sale, like a during the month of June, like yeah. a basically like a Black Friday, like sale. a Blake Black Friday sale. It's a big sale. If you use the link that is uh, attached to all our videos, all our videos. Yep. Just find a video, and in the description field, go down there, and you'll see a link to all of our all of our. Uh, partners and affiliates that we work with and harvest right will be there and if you click that link it will take you to the to the deal that you can get Mm -hmm. and it helps us which is great helps us keep uh, bringing you useful information and uh, helps harvest right helps you so it's a win-win for everybody we appreciate all of your support check out the stealthy hunter bone broth if you haven't already can't recommend that enough either and uh, yeah, check out that code and see what kind of sale is going on right now with Harvest Right using that uh, the the link. We don't have a code with Harvest Right. You can't type in gritty. Like you that's have, how we usually you have do it. to click the link to get any sort of discount. Just it's, click it's the usually link. like the maximum discount that they can allow anywhere. And this you month get it there and it ships right to your door. And this month is a big discount. Yes. So now's the time to get in on it. And again, uh, we can't recommend it enough. We wouldn't promote it. If we didn't think the value was there and it Absolutely. was a tremendous, we wouldn't, we wouldn't brag about it if we didn't think <laughs> it was pretty dang sweet. Exactly. Um, 
this podcast is real interesting because um, what Harvest Right has done, they're, they're a unicorn. They're like the the company out there who has come out with a, a consumer level. Friendly, in-home. Consumer friendly, in-home, yeah. Dehydrator. Freeze dryer. Freeze dryer yep. that, is, that can actually, that's actually powerful and does the job and at a price point that people can actually afford. Because we get into it in this show. I mean, I think early on, just 10 years ago or so, you're like 10 grand for yeah. a tool and like And it would this. make a few meals, two meals, three meals, <laughs> yeah. maybe, you know? You had to wait like days for yes. it to crank out one meal. Yep. So, yeah, what they've what they've done, they've really moved the needle on that, and they're the only game in town, really. There is, there's not really another product out there that can do what it's doing, and it's changing things because... We all know things are a little rocky sometimes, and food preservation and storage yeah. is massive. Absolutely. And we as hunters, we go out and we get those those ducks and those geese and those deer and those elk, and we get all that wild game. And this is just another tool for us to preserve it. Well, and I think, too, if you have any questions, like just go to YouTube and type in Harvest Right Freeze Dryer, and there will be videos that pop up. Yeah. Whether it's on Harvest Right page or other people that are using the Harvest Right homesteaders and stuff, and you can learn so much from it and yep. the value that it brings to you. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And then be on the lookout. We'll let you know. But those Treeline Academy courses are forthcoming. Yep, and they're going to empower you to make some delicious backcountry meals, but also some daily snacks, breakfasts, um, just just things that you're going to enjoy with your kids, like yeah. just on the regular every day. We're popping into those all the time. Yes. Very economical and delicious and healthy. Hope you enjoy the show. Let us know in the comments below what you think. And uh, thanks for tuning in and stay gritty. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Call. I've got my co-host here, Brad Hunt, to my left. Mm-hmm. Not really on the camera. but uh, And then we're here with Matt Neville from Harvest Right Freeze Dryers. And we are in uh, North Salt Lake. North Salt Lake, yep, you got it. At the yep. uh, at the facility, at the head, at the HQ, the HQ, the, uh, baby. HQ. Here's the HQ, <laughs> and we're getting a little tour, checking out the place, and I uh, figured the audience would love to hear uh, the story of Harvest Right. Get into our experience with the freeze dryers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Lampers and Livesey, Mark Livesey, have been uh, hard at work working on recipes and uh, experimenting with your freeze dryers i've we've all been using them for two years i've been using it a little longer than the other two because they were cheaper than me i'm known to spend a little money and ryan lampers is the tightest frugal (laughs) human being on the planet but he did he did get himself one i think he got a where did he get that he got it from somebody someone just gave it to him didn't they so he yes somebody one of his friends, I don't remember what the story was. Yeah, but yeah. They had it. They weren't using it very much. Ryan's like, I'll use it. And I'll get supply you and with I'll supply you with food in exchange I'll trade or you. something like that. Trade. Yeah. Anyway. Uh and now it's become a staple, a uh, uh, a part of our daily life. We use it for all of our hunts. Um about the time that I showed up on the mountain with an ice cream sandwich f- for at least two per day. Is about the time that Ryan Lampers, he'd mock me for eating yeah, ice said, cream. He said, Brian cannot keep off the ice cream. But at the same time, he 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 was negotiating for one here and there. So uh, anyway, let's let's talk about Harvest Right. So the freeze dryer, um, we, we were just in the facility taking a look at it down the road. And we see all the all the ones being assembled and getting ready for, for shipping. Look at the different models and designs, but why don't you just walk us through just a brief history. When did you start and how, how did it all happen? How did you get, get into this? And for those that are listening, what I, what I'd like to do is just give you a a brief background on why harvest, right? Machines are different than anything else you're finding out on the market. Number one, Number two, what are they capable of doing? You know, because that's really what we all care about at the end of the day. Um, And uh, yeah, the models, the price points, those are also things that people are like, well, I don't need, everyone kind of wants one, 
I think that's obvious in our community, Mm -hmm. especially with the backpacking type hunting we do and the food prep that we do, the preservation of food. We preserve, you know, we have all this wild game, which in all honesty, we haven't used the freeze dryers to preserve food uh, in long, like we do for fruits and vegetables. Like we'll, we'll go and pick a ton of peaches, berries, and all of that. And that's kind of a no brainer, preserve it, throw it in there freeze dry it uh you can you can get boxes and boxes during the prime grow season of certain fruits and freeze dry them that's that's a no brainer we've been doing that for a while Suzanne's all into that what we haven't done is meat so i want to talk a little bit about that because i have i like i said two two freezers full of meat frozen meat and i did lose a freezer of meat um earlier in the year because it became um, it, it came unplugged and I didn't have like an alarm on it and uh, it spoiled, mm. which was pretty devastating. And I did have a lot of canned meat and my audience knows we jar and can a ton of bear, elk and deer. And it's one of our favorite ways to preserve meat. But adding the freeze dryer element to, I have a giant moose we took this year and I hope to get another one here soon. It would be great to. Oh my gosh, you will! It will knock your socks off. How good that meat is freeze dried, and how easy it is to freeze dry it. So you're gonna love it. It's gonna be really good because frozen meat takes up space and electricity and all of that to store it. Um, jarred meat takes its pantry space, and you you know it's it's and it's heavy. You have to have mm-hmm. a storage system you know whether you but build it or whatever this little package of freeze dry if i could do this with a whole moose hindquarter oh no problem i mean <clears throat> that's got tremendous i can't tell me tell you guys how many people i know who have three and four freezers right mm-hmm. they've got so many freezers either full of meat because they love to hunt or they're big time gardeners yeah. right yep. and so they have extra freezers because they garden Well, they'll take all the meat and the fruits and vegetables out of their freezers, work it through their freeze dryer and get it on the shelf, right? Because they don't want to pay power on that meat. They don't want to run the risk of losing that freezer like happened to you, right? I think you said a thousand pounds of meat you lost that Mm -hmm. day. And so, but even better, right? That that meat on the shelf, once it's been freeze dried, is going to last up to 25 years, keep all its taste, all its nutrition, Right. All you do is add a little water to it and it's right back to fresh. We were just looking at a YouTube video you were showing me before this came on. And that's one of the things I want to get into is there's so much, there are so many resources online to help uh, you quick, quick YouTube, like harvest, right? Freeze dryer, ice cream sandwiches. Boom. You've got a quick little video to show you how to do it. Meat. Same thing. You were showing me some of yeah. The, you type the in freeze dried cheeseburger or freeze dried rotisserie chicken. You type in freeze dried venison or freeze dried elk into YouTube. Yes, you will get blown away by. And these are just people making videos, right? Yep, yep. Uh, they're not usually harvest dried videos, mm-hmm. but they will teach you what they do and show you how amazing meat turns out freeze dried. I also think a lot of people don't realize how good the meat is. They think they think they've had some, let's say, backpacking meal. And they, they were like, well, the meat didn't rehydrate well and uh, mm-hmm. it was crunchy or burger doesn't do this or, or whatnot. And that's just not the case. I, I had a, not too long ago, it was, uh, I believe it was like Mountain House or something. They had come out with the the biscuits with the, maybe it wasn't biscuits, but it was pork chops, like the full on mm, chops. Mm. I remember opening that for the first time and seeing that's just, that's just a p- cooked pork chop all all ready to go and you rehydrate it. And it, I, I was like, wow, this is impressive. Uh, how, first of all, it's like a tiny piece of foam. Mm-hmm. Then you, then you like a small lightweight, I should say lightweight piece of foam. And then it rehydrated. And I really couldn't tell the difference between that and a fresh one. Yep. That was remarkable. So, yep. Yep. uh, but so we'll get into some of that. Let's back up. Tell me about harvest, right? How, how did it come to be? W- what was the impetus behind it? Yeah, shoot. So Harvest Right, we've been making freeze dryers for 10 or 12 years now. And um, of all things, my brother had a freeze dried food company. Mm -hmm. It was actually the second largest freeze dried food company in America, right behind Mountain House. And 
they would get so many questions. Mm -hmm. People weren't necessarily always the most satisfied with the products they would put out, right? They either wanted more meat or different meat in the meals. They wanted a gluten-free option. They wanted different fruits and vegetables that could be offered. And so there was always this kind of unsatisfied customer who wanted something a little different. And it was just impossible on a commercial scale to meet what everyone wants, whether it's for their diet or their tastes or what their family likes or what they like. And so he said one day, he said, you know what? We should make a freeze dryer that's small that people can use in their house to make their own freeze dried food. What year was this? Roughly. 2011. Okay. 2011 is Roughly. what year this was. Yeah. So at the time, if a guy wanted to freeze dry something, what what were the resources needed to pull that off? I don't think it was possible. Um, you, what we had to do is we went and bought a laboratory freeze dryer that was like a thirty thousand dollar freeze dryer that would probably do two or three cups of food <laughs> in wow. it. And so we paid thirty grand for this. It was the size of bigger than any of your any any appliance you have in your house for sure bigger than like your big refrigerator that you use but it just had this little drying chamber that we paid thirty thousand dollars for and we took that machine and said how can we make this small how can we make it easy to use how can we increase the capacity right because there's not enough capacity in this thing right and how can we make it so grandma can use it right we want it to be so easy that you just press start and run it and so we, that's quite a checklist of uh wants. Yeah, right? Especially on the affordable side, right? $30,000, mm-hmm. no one's buying this at $30,000, no, right? No, 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 no one wants one. And so it really was quite the checklist and it took some time to even get close, right? And so the first model that we put out 2 years later, uh-huh. Um mind you we're in about a 1000 square foot little garage that we had rented, Mm -hmm. um, doing some R&D, making a freeze dryer two here and there, figuring out how to make them smaller, more affordable, testing some things. And the first model that we can finally put out is a little clunky to be, to be, to be genuine with you guys. I mean, it just was, it was a little clunky and it was 4,500 bucks. But I'll tell you what, at 4500 bucks, this little clunky freeze dryer did more food capacity, was easier to use, and um, was way more affordable than that $30,000 behemoth that we had bought to try to figure it out. So it was mm. still quite a feat almost Yeah. Um, yeah. at $4,500. And even at that price, freeze-dried food is so expensive that even at that price, people were licking their chops to get one because they were spending thousands and thousands of dollars on freeze-dried food. Now, mind you, most of the people who were buying that much freeze-dried food were wanting to have some food on the shelf, kind of a a little bit of a preparedness mindset for these people. But it wasn't uncommon for people to drop $10,000 on some freeze-dried food for their basement at the time. Right. Right. So they thought, well, 4,500 bucks, I can get one of these and I can use it for a year or two and it's easily paid itself back. Yeah. Right. But again, that machine at the time, 2014, it's a little clunky, right? And mm-hmm. and it requires a little more maintenance than probably we would have loved. And it's a little louder and a little noisier um, than we would have liked. And so... Quite but a few it, drawbacks, really. Really, really there I were. Mean, really there were. But it put out good food. It made good food. Mm-hmm. And so even that clunky machine, people loved it. And so you fast forward 10 years now mm-hmm. from that time, and this freeze dryer is half that cost... Um, a couple thousand bucks for a freeze dryer. You can get one kind of starting out at about $2,000 and shoot after you, you get a freeze dryer and you use it 30 times Yeah, and it's paid for itself, right? Like I was telling you earlier, five months. Here's these little, I got these little, here's a little packet of harvest for those are watching the video, a little harvest, right? Ice cream, uh, freeze dried ice cream sandwich deal you hear. These are like seven bucks or more when you go to REI to buy a little ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. It just pissed me off. It just pissed (laughs) me off because I, you know. Because they're good, right? But they're good. Yeah. And they are good. And and they're just that treat I want to have. I love my ice cream. And to be able to uh, throw an entire box of ice cream sandwiches in my freeze dryer 
hit them out and then go on a trip at, you know, it's pennies. I could do, I could do a whole box for seven bucks when all I get is one freaking sandwich. I think you can do like 50 ice cream sandwiches Something in one like batch. Yeah. Yeah. One batch in your right. freeze dryer, you can do 50 ice cream sandwiches. So do the math. 50 times seven, mm-hmm. you just got $300 worth of ice cream sandwiches <laughs> in, in one little run on your it's, freeze dryer, it's, right? it's true. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And so you can easily, especially with certain items, you can easily justify the cost very quickly. Doing what we do, being hunters and harvesting game, adding the meat preservation uh, aspect to it, which we'll get into later. That's also huge, but we do the primary driver for what drove us into pursuing freeze drying our food is we've been dehydrating our meals for 10 years. We've been doing jerky on dehydrators, uh, but we've been doing our meals on dehydrators and the because we were getting better more nutritious healthier more enjoyable meals stuff that we liked we were getting that through the free for, through uh dehydrator even a dehydrator which mm-hmm. guys but i like tip my cap to you people who can go figure out how to make a dehydrator get you something that you like yeah it's pretty cool because most people really think of a dehydrator and they think jerky right, yeah, right. that's yeah. like the average person is thinking yeah it'll make some beef jerky or some right mm, right you know exactly but they're not usually thinking meals so you guys are pretty like pretty impressive to be able to get something out of that well and it's quite the process because then the freeze dryer or sorry the dehydrator a lot of times you're sep- you really have to separate your meats from your noodles from yeah. your vegetables because they all dry different mm. so you're doing it in seconds. you got to get them to the right thickness mm-hmm. exactly across the board yeah. same with your jerky same too. with jerky same with your fruit roll-ups and stuff mm. like when you really do a like banana that. you know the freeze dryer the, the not the freeze dryer the dehydrator shrinks everything and mm-hmm. kind of cooks it a little mm-hmm. bit everything mm-hmm. gets a little bit cooked in a dehydrator where with a f- freeze dry machine it just pulls the liquid out just pulls the water. Yeah, out. like you look at this broccoli, right? I mean, this broccoli. Can looks... you imagine if you had dehydrated that broccoli, it would just shrivel and turn oh, black. It would right? just exactly. to this little tiny, little, yeah. little tiny thing. No, this is unbelievable. You wouldn't know that this is freeze dried, right? I have you, a, you I have a quick story and... for you, Matt. The very first time I freeze dried, or sorry, I dehydrated bananas. Didn't even think about it. Dehydrated them, put them in a bag, and I'm sitting there glassing. And next thing I know, I'm like. I just realized I probably ate six or seven bananas, not yeah. even thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. And the last three days of that trip were miserable. Like, <laughs> just a quick That's story. a word to the wise. Every time we do, mm-hmm. even the freeze dry stuff, because like peaches, mm-hmm. you could eat 12 peaches in a few minutes. Because they're so good. Because yeah. it's just like a bag of chips or something. Candy. And uh, they taste great. And you don't realize how much fiber you've just ingested, mm-hmm. how much fruit you just, you would never eat. 12, 12 peaches, peaches in one city. Yes. Right. So when you pull that water out, you got to be a little careful in your portion. So we measure out, this is a full banana. This is a, this is an apple. This mm-hmm. is so that you're getting, you know, you're only eating one or two apples a day and then a banana, you're not eating 10 because yes. that'll wreck a guy wreck real you. quick yep. on the yep. mountain. Yep. But when you have that banana portioned out, you know, you get all the nutrition oh, from the banana, the all the dry, carbs, all you could throw the right? whole banana in. Right. And it just one you don't have to even dice it right. or any no 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 need to dehydrate. Yeah. Just like, you, you can. You can freeze dry a full banana. Whole banana. You're exactly right. One time I was so lazy, I went to, like I found bananas for like twenty nine cents a pound. Yeah. I freeze dried fifty bananas in my little freeze dryer. I just didn't even cut them. I didn't bother. I didn't <laughs> right. want to. And so I just peeled them and chucked them on the tray. And I freeze dried 50 bananas. They were kind of awesome, actually, to yeah. just kind of hold this. And it looked just like a fresh banana. Yep. You can chuck that in a smoothie or take it on a hike. And you've got yeah. an awesome snack just, just in seconds, right? It's, a, it's amazing. So <laughs> back to the the uh, the early version you came uh-huh. out with. Yes. What was the – you had some demand. But, yeah. you know, how did you take it from that to – you know, let's fast forward. To- well, shoot, fast forward, right? So we've always wanted to to reduce the prices, make them more affordable. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to get too sentimental here, but at Harvest Right, we we care about having more customers, not to make more money, but because we believe in our products. Mm. And so we've always wanted to make the products more affordable and uh, so that more people can own them because we really believe that this freeze dryer, not only will it enhance your adventure and make your adventure better, right? Make your experience hunting, camping, backpacking, fishing way better, but you're also going to love having that food on the shelf 
just in case, to pr- just for your family, right? Yep. Whether you're going to eat it in six weeks or in yep. 25 yep. years. And so we really believe in in preserving gardens the best way possible. And so... Eggs. Eggs, right? Eggs are huge right now because, you know, there's all sorts of shady, weird stuff going on in the egg industry mm-hmm. right now. And we have our own chickens. And so we get massive egg laying you backed up in lots of eggs and yep. uh you know we'll we'll f- freeze dry 80 100 eggs uh a week and that's that's major i think for long term prep you know when when uh the great pandemic of 20 you know <laughs> well, uh, when when that happened right people were running out and grabbing toilet paper by the ma- in the mad mad rush and all sorts of uh supplies and food as well and there were shortages of things and Mm -hmm. it was a crazy time and then people were being shut in and businesses were being closed for these uh lockdowns and stuff like that and i think there were there there's for us given the fact that we have so much preserved food and Mm -hmm. so much meat and and your skill too Mm -hmm. right yes Mm -hmm. i don't I felt very little uh, anxiety at all about stores being shut down. Like we are good. We got, we got stuff. We, right. Yeah. And that's just our, it's, I take it for granted because it's just a way of life for us. We've been preserving and keeping, you know, supplies on hand for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so the idea of having maybe a month's worth of food or less on hand is a foreign, like doesn't even cross. I, I just take for granted that everybody's got storage. Three freezers full of so, meat. Yeah. And, like, right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Jarred stuff. Can go out and get one if he needs to. Yeah. Right? Like, like I have sort to. of take it for granted and I have to, I have to step out and go, wait a minute. No, we're actually not the norm. We're, yeah. We're kind of a, a, an anomaly like that. And so introducing people to what the harvest right can bring to the table and to, to a community who, typically does hunt and then store that um but get finding an alternative way to to do that through the through the free dryer it's just an inter it's a fun journey to go down i'm looking at that cheese over there mm-hmm. that <laughs> that seems crazy yeah awesome right yeah we add a little water to that cheese and put it on nachos or whatever you do with cheese right put in any meal or anything you have it just seems... it'll turn out perfect well and <laughs> like the eggs right here because we had two chickens die like two weeks ago. And I was like in remorse because of all, all the stuff going on with all the eggs and stuff. And I'm like, all summer we had dozens and dozens of eggs, but we had to like sell them because we didn't have a freeze dryer. Right. And so I'm like, oh, the, all the possibilities with the freeze dryer, you know? Like, yep. 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 It is just. We dehydrated eggs for a long time, but it takes so yes. long to dehydrate foods. And like I said, it cooks it a little bit. And then the rehydration kind of sucks. You got to simmer it and kind of boil mm. it for a while. With freeze dried, you just boop, drop in some warm water and you got the ratio right. You're done. Like it'll just reconstitute and you're ready to go. Yep. Well, yep. and with the, you know, the downside of dehydration is you lose the nutritional value. Within, it doesn't have the shelf life. Within eight yeah. months, a year where you can go dozens of, or, you know, 10 years, 20, 20 years with freeze dried. 25. Right. You know, you don't lose that nutritional value. So you wanted to get the price down. So we wanted to get the price down, right? Make these more affordable, and and already you've 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 already it was a feat, right? Yes. Getting from thirty thousand to forty five hundred. Mm-hmm. But really, we thought, man, to to get these in people's homes, it just has to be more affordable than this. Yeah. And so we just started working really hard on getting the price down. But at the same time of getting the price down, making the products better and easier to use, which is is usually counterintuitive in mm-hmm. in, in in the business world, right? Usually, yeah. when you try to make something better, it costs more. But but we went down the path of making it better and more affordable, and we've always done that over the years. Um, to where we've landed at a product in the last few years that is so easy to use, so quiet so much more affordable than anything to where now if you get a freeze dryer and use it once or twice a week, freeze drying leftovers, freeze drying produce when you find a deal, freeze Mm -hmm. drying meat, right, that you get when you're on your hunts or your adventures, use it once or twice a week and it has paid for it. It will pay for itself in six months time. Mm -hmm. Just in, just in four years time when I first got one of these freeze dryers. And then since that time been following the progression of the units, the pump, 
the pro the, the way you're putting them out there. I mean, you've, you've definitely, um, improved and improved and improved and improved over and over. Like it's continuing to get better, less expensive and more efficient, better product. Um, and then I'm looking around going, where, where are all the harvest right competitors? Like where are all the companies that are out there just also attempting this feat? And I always wondered what, what, what took this, what took so long for a harvest right to exist? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. talking about a million dollar freeze dryer, you know, and now people for a couple hundred thousand can run, can accomplish the same sort of thing that a million dollar investment would have before. That's all because you guys, how, how, why didn't, why, it, it, jumping ahead, I think to myself, well, it's a lot, Brian. It's a lot harder to do than um, than. It's, there's more going on in that machine than to you do think. Than, exactly. Yeah, it has to be. Otherwise, that's not a blender, right? It's not like just making another blender or making another. Yeah. Like a dehydrator is a, a literally a light bulb with a fan. Right? You're like the game it's in town. Not like that. There's nothing else out there that's really hitting it like this. So yeah, it just kind of why why didn't more people step up. Why didn't this get invented sooner for the consumer? Right. Why was that freeze dryer that we had to buy $30,000 that would only do a small portion of product and you had to be a scientist to run it? Yep. Right. Why was that the case? Well, it's because to freeze dry something, you have to, you have to really, really defy physics in a lot of ways or not defy physics, but you have to get physics involved where you have to freeze to 40 below zero. Mm -hmm. Right. Really, really, really powerful freezing. You have to, uh, create a powerful vacuum like outer space. You have to be able to warm within that vacuum. So you've really got three appliances working together. You've got freezing to minus 40, vacuum like outer space, and warming in that in that same system. And then you've got a computer that makes it so all you do is put your food in and press start and it knows how to get it done, right? You don't have to program a different pineapple and a different yeah. moose yeah. and elk and and grilled Dude. chicken or whatever, right? <laughs> well that's the thing is with dehydrating like i said you're pulling out individual products vegetables meats you know uh fruits because they all are so different they they dry so much different than each other where with a freeze dryer push the button go and like you always talk about is Mm -hmm. grandma can do Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. that's the goal right the goal is to make it so if there's a if you had a barbecue and you had grilled chicken and and steak and mac and cheese and pulled pork Mm -hmm. and ice cream and peaches you could put all those things in your freeze dryer at the same time press start you didn't waste any of that food walk away and then in two weeks on your next hunt you've got grilled chicken and steak and yep. pulled pork and mac and cheese and ice cream and peaches mm-hmm. with you on your hunt. And that was food that you mm-hmm. might've tossed. That is just the most amazing meal yep. that, that, that just turns out awesome. But you can put all those things in your freezer at the same time and they'll turn out perfect. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, it's the, like magic. The, the thing I keep thinking about is you know, I'm looking at these raspberries right here and raspberries turn in the, in the fridge. They, they get, well, we buy and, you, you, you Whenever they're right there on the edge of molding mm-hmm. and they're in the and grocery store says, you know, they're 59 cents per package. Yeah, they're yeah. just dumping them. That's when Suzanne buys just crates of them and then just throws them in the freeze dryer at home. Yep. Because now we just, we, we got something, I mean, for the price, dollars. yeah, for a few dollars and now we're stacked. Normally that would just go in the freezer if you want to preserve it. Yeah. And then it wouldn't go into a smoothie, but it's not as functional as the freeze dry option you need all that freezer space it takes up freezer space um and when and then you got to eat it in some way you're not going to backpack with it you know right but that freeze dryer changes everything now we did dehydrate it a lot Mm -hmm. and then it would turn to a powder you know and we would you know we, we we didn't we didn't care for that and it didn't seem very efficient either the dehydrator had to run quite a long time not for not for raspberries, but for certain things, man, it yeah. would it would quite right. Well, and days it's a of dehydration, game, it's a guessing game because you're like, has it quite done? Is it not? You know, so yeah. you're always checking it. Kind of like you said, the vibrancy of what you freeze dry just turns out perfect, right? This broccoli or those raspberries just look like a fresh raspberry, yeah. and that's how you know they kept all their nutrition. Mm-hmm. When that broccoli all of a sudden shrivels up and turns black on you, yeah. you know it's. It, Really, when you it, when you dehydrate something, it, it loses yeah. about forty percent of its nutrition. Yep. Um. So back to back to the story of 
kind of the progression of freeze dryers and making them more affordable, I'll tell you guys, there were just little, I don't know how else to say it, but little strokes of brilliancy and little miracles along the way to figure out how to make this thing work that were pretty amazing. We have some incredible people here who are brilliant people, Mm -hmm. but also just super inspired people that were able to figure out things that in like in the refrigeration industry, if you want to get techie, like trying to get to minus 40 cold, Mm -hmm. they were able to figure out things on how to do that, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. no one in the world has ever figured out. Mm. And before harvest, right, you had to have two refrigeration systems to get that cold, right? And that adds a lot of cost. So you had a, one refrigeration system would get it to zero, for example. Right. And the second refrigeration system take would it take, it, take it down further. Wow. We had guys here who did something that seriously had never been done before, where in the history of the world, they figured out how to, on one refrigeration system, get cold enough to freeze dry. So there were just little things like that along the way that were pretty amazing, that, that we, we felt pretty fortunate to, to come upon amazing people here that, who were able to figure out things and invent things to, to make it so you don't have to buy a freeze dryer for 10000 20000 30000 but you can get one for 2500 bucks, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because we were able to, with engineering, reduce those costs as well. So let's talk about the offerings that you have right now. Yeah. Sizes, yeah. What, what they're capable of doing. Sure. So right now, um, if you jump on harvestright.com, you'll find four sizes. You'll find, and we keep it really simple, mm-hmm. small, medium, large, extra large. Mm-hmm. So your small freeze dryer will do four to seven pounds of food in a shot. Yep. Almost no one buys that small freeze dryer just because for a few hundred dollars more, you can double the capacity. Mm. So that medium freeze dryer will do about 10 pounds of food in a shot. And so that's usually your most popular popular model. Um, and, and then you, what's the cost disparity between the two? You're looking at about 500 bucks different. You're looking at about, like if you drop down to a store, you can get a medium for 2,600 bucks mm-hmm. and a small will cost you 2,200 bucks. Gotcha. And so you're looking at not two different costs for twice the capacity. Okay. But then you can jump to the next level, which is the large, which is almost twice the capacity of the medium. Mm -hmm. Um, And that one uh, will do about 16 to 17 to almost 20 pounds of food, depending on what you're freeze drying. So like if you did meat, you could do 20 pounds of meat in it, no problem, Mm. in that large one. And now we have an extra large that'll do about 30 to 35 pounds of food. So that that's really if you want to wow. get real yeah. serious with it. And that extra large freeze dryer, just to give you an example, anything like that extra large freeze dryer in the world today would easily cost you forty thousand dollars if you wanted to buy it. And we sell it, I think, for about forty five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, that's I'm, I'm unbelievable. Like, how can you? <laughs> I mean, that price point. Have you been tempted to put that price point at eight thousand? I mean, you're already way well below. Right. Forty forty thousand dollars, and you're bringing it in at four. Why not eight? Sometimes Why there are people 12? even internally at Harvest Right who say you guys are crazy for selling these for as cheap as you do, yeah. because you could sell them for so much more. But honest, truly, we 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 really just want more and more people to be able to mm. get freeze dryers and mm. and well, have I was, them. I was looking up, Matt, kind of like the average dollar amount of wasted food throughout. I don't know if this is the world, United States, but it's breaking mm-hmm. down like fruits right here. And so take watermelon, for example, the loss volume in 2016 is, this is million pounds, 1200 million pounds of watermelon were wasted in 2016. Wow. So I'm just thinking in my head, <laughs> you know, as a family, as a household, you know, how many times, oh shoot, these, these fruits are vegetables. Oh, we totally do that. Potatoes, right. whatever, yeah, right, you throw right. it out. And I'm like, hmm, in your head, you know, 2,500 bucks, that's you know, six months of well, yeah, saved and, food. And if you think about it, there are times, you know it, where you're like, I should buy 30 watermelons right now. This yeah. is ridiculous. Right. This price. 10 and cents a it pound tastes or something. so good right now. It's like candy. And you only buy what you know you can consume because you're not preserving it. Right. But now you just throw it on the freeze dryer and boom, you, you just keep, you can buy tons of it and preserve it. And it's yep. so delicious to eat later. We do a lot of melons. Uh, mm. for our trips. See, and, I, and I've freeze dried like honeydew melon and yeah. stuff, watermelon. It, I tried, and it's just it shrinks so much. Dehydrated, yeah, dehydrated. It shrinks down so much. And right. Like, the melon, I've kind of figured out it doesn't shrink down. How as to make much. it pretty good? I kind of figured out how to make it, and that's kind of like my mountain t- treat. You know, I like sure the, the on the dehydrator. Content. Yes. But what about 
freeze drying watermelon. Oh, freeze dried watermelon is like candy, guys. Yeah, it is so right. good, and and it's so easy to do. Right? That's the yeah. Because right here we got some pineapple, the pineapples, and bananas. That's right. Is like what I bananas especially. I love bananas. And oh, yeah. it's it's just like that broccoli over there and those berries. You just when you de when you freeze dry it, it just preserves almost the entire shape and bulk and all that stuff. And the flavor um, is unreal. It's so good freeze dried. Mm-hmm. Pineapple, perfectly pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Pineapple is like a candy. Watermelon is like a candy, yep. especially when you're you know because us as far as meals on the mountain, we really try and and even in everyday life, we try and watch what we eat try and stay healthy and you always want that treat you kind of get that craving on the mountain and that's like when you have fresh pineapple like this or watermelon or the smoothie skittles that people take you know it's like there's your treat that's lightweight and it preserves forever yeah the smoothie is awesome right for for, mm sure one of the things too is we spend two three weeks out in the mountains come back for a few days go back again for two two weeks three weeks we'll we'll spend uh, 90 days in the field in a four-month window Mm. So most of the time in those, that period out in the mountains. And one of the things that has been a problem is vegetables. Mm. It's, you know, typically you don't get a lot of vegetable matter. Sure. Worked into your diet. But through freeze drying, we we, we do that. And since making our own meals, yeah, we'll do kale, we'll do broccoli, you know, we'll do some greens that you normally don't get in like a typical refuel or pe- or mountain house type meal you know yeah you guys so uh, something came to me uh i'll have people say to me who who spend time in the mountains like you guys do they'll say what was my favorite meal when i was out on this trip mm-hmm. right and they'll say my favorite meal was the one that when we ended the trip we stopped at the burger place right. <laughs> and we finally got to eat something we liked right yeah. but then they'll say but now that I have my harvest right, mm-hmm. I can, if I want to, I can make that burger, no problem on yeah. the mountain, but I can also make chicken fettuccine Alfredo. I can have shrimp and lobster if I want. <laughs> I can have steak and potatoes. I've seen people at 10,000 feet eat steak and potatoes yeah, and shrimp and lobster, me that. right? You were showing me just a minute ago, talking about what the machines can do. A cheeseburger. Yeah. Dude did the whole cheeseburger. The burger itself was freeze-dried. Yep. The cheese was freeze-dried. And uh, even as far as the onion rings, right? He had yes. freeze-dried onion rings that he put on his burger. Onion rings that were breaded and cooked yep. already, like freeze-dried. Well, put they're all raw, right? Yeah, you jump yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, so he was all, all the ingredients were raw. He's saving them to rehydrate and then cook, you know, at a later time. Yeah, you jump on YouTube and type in freeze-dried cheeseburger, and this guy does a pretty cool <laughs> yeah. pretty uh-huh. cool deal um, building the burger with this freeze dryer. So that's one of the cool things, too, right? Not only are you going to get that nutrition so you feel good yeah. and you feel better, but it's going to taste good, right? Mm-hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be that comfort food that you want when you have to go hike five miles to get to the next spot or, you know, you, you might really look forward to it. And it's so easy to prep those meals on the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. So much easier to prep a freeze-dried meal than a dehydrated meal and so much lighter weight to take with you yeah. anyway. Yeah. So once you get to the camp and you decide to prep it, it's just it's just in minutes. Well, and, and I, I want to add this too is because even, even the dehydrated, we would dehydrate meals because it's food that you already know you like, eat every day at your home. You know, when you, you grab a freeze-dried meal that's like a, you know, mass-produced meal, you you can have massive issues, stomach issues. Yeah. You're eating it day mm-hmm. after day after yeah. day. Or if you're eating the foods that you're already making at home, the nutrition value is there, you don't have those problems. Yeah. and Right. So if it happens to be a leftover chicken noodle soup... Mm-hmm. That's chicken noodle soup you already eat anyway. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a leftover yeah. lasagna or yeah. steak and potatoes Anything. or whatever. Any of it. Yeah. Any of it that you make for dinner anyway. Yeah. Freeze dry those meals and take them with you so they don't end up in the trash, right? Those cheesecake bikes over there. Like your whole your whole <laughs> office here is like just tempting of delicious photos of delicious. Like that smoothie looking drink right yeah. there yep. with the berries. And I mean, it's, un, it's unbelievable what you can do. The The instructions let's say someone is intimidated by the idea of it uh they shouldn't be no. it's really easy 
Yeah, so easy to use a freeze dryer. So seriously, you put your food. It's like a the, microwave. You put it's it's like a microwave, <laughs> but if you could press start and the microwave knows how long to cook it for. Yeah. Right. Honestly, yeah. it's smarter yeah. than a microwave. A microwave, you at least have to put in two minutes or something. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this, you just press start and it will just figure it out, start to finish what you do, and and you can mix and match on the trays like we talked about. So. Mm-hmm. If you have a chicken noodle soup on one tray, you can do that. You've got a beef stew on another tray, freeze-dried. You've got some venison and elk and some ice cream and peaches all in your freeze dryer at the same time. Yeah. All in those different trays. Yep. Let's talk about raw meat a little bit mm-hmm. because uh, I I under I can cook up a giant batch of ground, ground moose meat, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. and season it, get it just how I want it, and I can just start putting it in mylar bags and storing it. Enough for my family to make a spaghetti, to make a meatloaf, wh- whatever it is that I want. We can just mylar bag it pre cooked. And then you just add that, reconstitute it a little bit. There's a bunch of YouTube videos on it. You b- dump it in a bowl, you add a little bit of water, and you kind of mix it up and add a little more water. And then boom, it, it kind of hits that perfect mixture. Yep. You can throw it back in the pan, warm it up there, the microwave it, whatever, whatever you want to do, however you yep. want to do it. Yep. And it is like, it was before it was dehydrated or freeze dried. Yep. So um, that's remarkable. But let's talk about, let's say we have a couple of moose or a couple of elk, a moose and some and some deer that we've killed. And we, we a hunter wants to uh, cut and wrap some of that, you know, mm-hmm. throw it in the freezer. But the other half, he wants to store long term, but he doesn't want to have to cook it all first. Yeah how does that work? You're right. Two great ways to do this, right? The first way is to cook up a bunch of it Mm -hmm. and then we can freeze dry it and get it on the shelf. And man, that moose and that elk usually is really lean. You're going to get that great 25 year shelf life out of it. Um, And it's going to be cooked and ready to go just the way you like it. But you're right. I see other people freeze dry their meats raw and that's not uncommon either. So they'll slice it up. They won't do usually big thick steaks, but they'll slice it up more like fajita strips Mm -hmm. and freeze dry it. And then when they add a little water back to it, they can throw it in the skillet or throw it on the grill and it'll, it'll be perfect. We tend to go through these periods where we cube, we just have an excess of meat. So we're, we're, getting rid of the trim. We're all butchering it. I got the kids there. Suzanne's there. We're all just working on, <laughs> on a big animal. Mm-hmm. And we get to the point where we're, we're, we're like, okay, we have the cuts we want with the back straps and the, the loins and a couple of things, a couple of roasts, mm. the rest of it where we just cube, we just start cubing into little one by one inch cubic yeah. inches yeah. or one and a half. And we just start bagging it. And it's just Ziploc after Ziploc because later we can dump it into a stew and we can slow cook it Mm -hmm. in a crock pot. We can throw it into the grinder, maybe even add a little bacon or pork fat to it if we want to or not, grind it up when it unthaws. Uh, We can just dump it right into the pan with a little butter and sprinkle some seasonings on it. It's just very versatile. We've already trimmed it. We already cut it. I can see right now in my mind, I'm thinking all those gallon Ziplocs that are in the freezer of cubed meat, get it all out and freeze dry all of it. So my freezer gets empty and I have all that cubed meat just ready in the same way. Yep. And then when I do want to use it, I just rehydrate it a little bit and then I can throw it in the crock pot. I can sear it the way we like to cook it sometimes. I can throw it. I can throw it uh, in the grinder. I can do whatever I yep, want yep. For, for that day if I want to do burgers mm-hmm. that day. The same way I pull that bag out in in the frozen form, I can pull it out off the shelf. Off the shelf, and I don't have to wait for it to unthaw. Yep, you don't have like, to wait for it. It's to thaw. just a little reconstitution. Which, how long does that take? In minutes, in sec, yeah, you just get a little water on it and. Done. And in minutes it's done. But the cool thing is, is I see people get, getting rid of freezers. So they'll have three or four extra freezers mm-hmm. and they want to say, I only want one extra freezer. And so they'll get all the meat, all the fruits and vegetables out of those freezers and work their way down because they don't want to pay power on that meat. No doubt. That meat might sit in a freezer for a full year before they eat it. And that meat has value, yeah. but you're also paying the power to keep it. Mm-hmm. Right. So they love that. Because you'll always get that cost. I mean, people will have this thought right now, how much does it cost to run a freeze dryer, right? It costs about the same as a dehydrator as far as power consumption goes. 
But the cool thing is, is once it's freeze dried, it goes on the shelf. Yeah. So it's not corn sitting in my freezer for six months. It's yeah. not cubed meat sitting in my freezer for nine months before yeah. we get to it. It's 24 hours and on the shelf, mm-hmm. right? Shelf stable. I don't have to worry about yeah. losing that freezer full of meat like you mentioned, Brian, earlier. And yeah. those things. Hitting the road, too. There's, there, you know, when I moved from uh, the, the area over there in, uh, when I moved to Logan, basically, mm-hmm. Cache Valley, I had a, three freezers at the time with, you know, some of them didn't have meat in them. It was just hides and heads and stuff of, of, of uh, some, some, some animal, a lot of bear furs. There was like six bear furs in there that I just wouldn't mid meaning to get to, you know, but still I had a couple of freezers of meat that I had to contend with moving. Yeah, sure. You know? And it was a logistics thing and, and it's heavy and, the idea of having that just in uh, dehydrated packs inside some totes, man, how clean and nice and lightweight and portable. And it just, it seems like the ultimate tool for preservation for long term. There's no better way to preserve foods than, mm-hmm. than this way, this method. Um, well, and, and I think about too a lot because it's happened. I think it's happened to everybody. You, you, take your leftover meat from processing and you throw it in a quick Ziploc bag and you're like, ah, a week or two, I'll get back to it. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll figure yep. out how it is. Five months later, it's freezer burnt. Can't use it at all. Where instead of throwing it in the bag, yeah. you, you throw it on the, deep, the freeze dryer and it's done. You yeah. have it for 20 years. Yeah. So it's like the loss of food is minimal. I, I rarely have anything that lasts long enough to get yeah. freezer burned. I, I, you yep. say have a freezer burn problem. I remember, you know, years and years ago. Yeah. I don't really run across it no, very often. No. Maybe Same we here. go through it too fast. Same I don't here. know. but You work your way through it pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's not, good. Not so much a problem. I'm but, saying there are a lot of people that, that may not eat that much meat all the time. Yeah. And they do. They just throw it in the freezer and... No, it gets forget it. Or they forget about, about it. It mm-hmm. gets in a different section, especially if you have a chest freezer and it ends yeah, up in the bottom. Right. And mm-hmm. You kind of forget about it and down God, there. Dang it. So I think that happens. And and you're exactly right. So so many people, you know, back to the harvest right story a little bit. So many people are going to buy freeze dryers. You know, you can get them at Sportsman's Warehouse. You can get them at lots of these outdoor retailer stores. Mm-hmm. Um, but so many people buy them with the intention initially thinking, I want to make awesome meals for for my hunt. Right. Yeah. I want to have. Uh, great back snacks, yeah. backcountry hunts, and things like that. And I want to freeze dry that meat afterwards. But then they say, "But I bought it for that. But my wife, mm-hmm. she uses it to have awesome snacks on hand all the time. Yeah, she's yeah. putting up food. I mean, my wife in my house has definitely a little more of a prepper mindset than I do, and she's putting up food to have on the shelf just in case, right? She's yeah. she's not wasting meals, and she's saying, well, I know the kids love my spaghetti, so I'm going to freeze-dry whatever's left, and yeah. we can put that on the shelf. We can pull it out if we don't want to make dinner one night. Um, we can send it send it with our kids to lunch, for, for school lunch and things like that, or we can have it for 25 years on the shelf. And so a lot of people buy it with one thing in mind, but then they start realizing, my laws, this, these, these freeze-dried pears are amazing, mm-hmm. and these freeze-dried mm-hmm. peaches and strawberries are so good. I'm just munching on them, right? And, and kind of using it for other reasons they didn't even think of to right, begin yeah. with. I have tried to freeze things that are high in fat. What's the down, what is the issue there? Why doesn't that work as well as you know, other means? And, and what is, I still have done it, and it still worked. Mm-hmm. So what's the, what's the story there? Yeah. So when you're freeze drying meat in particular, leaner meat Mm -hmm. will store for a lot longer time. So if you have in your mind, I want to get 20 years out of this meat, Mm -hmm. right? Then you're going to want to go for, for freeze drying leaner meats for that longer shelf life. Like you said, you can still freeze dry meats and foods that that have more fat in them, you're just not going to get that 20 year shelf life. It's something that you'd want to eat with a, it within a couple of years rather than, and I mean, even a couple of years for, for most of us is, yeah. is great, but, but you're not going to get that 20 year shelf life out yeah. of really fatty meat. So I'll see people cook ground beef. Um, and then they'll actually, after they cook it, it's really kind of greasy. Yep. So they'll rinse it off mm-hmm. and then they'll season it. Mm-hmm. after it's been rinsed off and then freeze dry it, right? So then they're going to get that much better shelf life, just kind of getting some of the grease off sure. of it. Yeah. Um, and then they can rehydrate it and have tacos or do whatever they want with it. 
just in seconds. But yeah, that is an important thing to keep in mind as you have a freeze dryer is really fatty meats aren't going to keep as long freeze dried. Now, here's the here's the real kicker though. Anything freeze dried is going to preserve better than any other method. So if you yes. tried to dehydrate or can fatty meat, you're still going to have a lot shorter shelf life than if you had freeze dried it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Anything freeze dried is going to is is really going to turn the out better the longevity of it and Nine times out of ten, I know you 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 can bear meat, and that that's that's pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I don't talk to a lot of guys who do that, but nine times out of ten, it's also going to taste a lot better. Like if you freeze dry your salsa, fresh mm-hmm. salsa you made versus canning it, it's going to taste way better freeze yeah. dried. If you freeze dry lasagna or chi- I mean, how many things can you freeze dry that you could never bottle and can or really yeah. dehydrate? Right? I mean, right, you can't right. you can't bottle and can raw eggs and milk. No, you can't no. bottle and can your favorite green smoothie. You can't bottle and can ice cream. You can't really do that with lasagna, no, you can't. chicken noodle soup, yep. all these things you can freeze dry that you, that you just really can't do any other way. No, you're absolutely right. About the only thing that I'll mention to people that I use the dehydrator for now is jerky. That's right. it. I, I really don't, I can't mm-hmm. think of much else that I use it for anymore. It is strictly for jerked meat. Uh, and outside of that, it doesn't get used now because I have a freeze dryer. Yeah, yeah. And that and and really that freeze dried meat is going to just really keep it fresh. Mm-hmm. So, and and you're going to freeze dry that meat a lot more and more. So, most people who end up getting a freeze dryer, they do put away the dehydrator yeah. and they do put mm-hmm. away the canner just because yeah. freeze drying is so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. And you can freeze dry so many more things and the quality Dude, that comes out is I much always better. think that Suzanne's going to blow up the house with that pressure cooker and the pots and the boiling <laughs> well, and water the, and it's intense. Yeah, and the process too, you know, you're yeah. you're sanitizing lids and then you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a process. It's a, it's lot a, of work. It's a job. Yes. I will say I love my canned meat. It's like you know, you unscrew that jar, dump it out and you're you're good to That's go awesome. like it's right from That's the pretty cool. But it's a it it we we do two or three bears, but and I might do bears just because bears are like buffalo, even more so. Bears are just such a high fat content meat mm. that it it uh, I'll have to try it. But the leaner meats, I absolutely have got to start using the freeze. Yeah. Dryer Again, on. you can freeze dry the fattier meats. It's just how long do you yeah. want it to keep? Right? Yeah. How long do you want that that meat to last? Well, and, and yeah. I don't know if you're ready to move on to this, but I always think about what is the maintenance on a freeze dryer. Yeah. Because I think that's a lot of questions that people, okay, yeah, I, I can do this. I can do that with my foods, but then what's the maintenance upkeep on a freeze dryer? Yeah. So that, that's kind of going back to this development of making the products quiet, more affordable, easier to use, right? And less maintenance. Mm-hmm. So now today we have a product that you can get that is so easy to use and the maintenance is almost none. Each freeze dryer comes with a vacuum pump. And the vacuum pump automatically turns on and off when it needs to during the process. Yeah. Um, and these vacuum pumps, they, they, they take a little oil. So you have to put a little bit of oil in them. It's clear mineral oil that comes with it. And used to be when our when we first came out that we would actually have you filter the oil through a filter. Mm-hmm. Um, even think of like, have you seen like those Brita water pitchers? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what it looks like, right? We have you drain it through the water pitcher. Brita water pitcher, it actually filters the oil though, and then yeah. you pour it back in. Well, it used to be that you had to do that after every batch, and it was a little bit annoying. Customers would say, I love my freeze dryer, but this is a little bit of a pain. Yep. yep. Well, the vacuum pump nowadays that comes with every freeze dryer, you only have to do that like once every six months, right? It's like every 30 batches. Mm-hmm. So depending on how much you're using your sure. freeze dryer, it's like putting gasoline in a lawnmower or gasoline in your yeah. car, and you have to do it once every three or four, five, six months, depending on how much you're using your free You just dryer. dump it out and dump in. So it's easy. easy. It takes two minutes. Um, whereas in the early stages of Harvest Right, there was a little more maintenance, and it was a didn't, little noisier. Didn't you have a oilless version and then an oil version? We still have an oil-free version, um, but I would say 90% of people or maybe higher, just go with the oil version because oilless version is more expensive and the oil version is so easy. 
that it's mm. it, it may as well be oilless honestly how easy that oil version is gotcha. because there's almost no maintenance on it so it's not worth spending the extra money for most mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. you know I, I probably shouldn't say that but you know <laughs> hey, if you're listening go buy the oil free version because it's more expensive no i probably wouldn't because it's, it's just so it's just easy so hard to justify mm-hmm. given the ease of maintenance yeah you showed me you just basically unscrew a cork you unscrew that. My dad's done it on mine uh, every time. I don't even have to worry about it. it but you, you just undo it, drain it, and put it in. Put it right back in. Yeah, you just undo it right through the Brita water pitcher looking looking device, and yep. then just pour it right back right in. Right back yeah, that's it. So, so there have been some hurdles along the way to overcome. And what, it's if, been fun. if a if a guy's just got money to burn, how much is the difference between the oilless? And uh, because it was, I remember we got the oil version for the very reason that it's quite a bit more money. Yep, yep, yep. And it's going to sound expensive. This is the most, we've made this into the most affordable oil free pump in the world, but it's still an extra $1,500. Yeah. Right. Other oil free pumps will cost you five grand out there in the world if you, if you look for one. Yeah. People don't care about that, but. I'm just saying that because even at $1,500, it's a deal for an oil-free pump. Right, right. Um, but that's the cost it, that's upgrade, the upgrade cost. to never have to every six months take three minutes to drain it and Ex- put new oil yeah. in. Yeah, and you know what? But but for some people, the word oil just kind of freaks them out. Yeah. And so you hear oil and you think changing the oil in my car or something <laughs> something that's a lot more onerous than this really is. I would think of this as something like when I vacuum my carpet, I have to pour whatever I vacuumed up into the trash after yeah, yeah, yeah. when the vacuum fills up. Yeah. I mean, it's it's that, it's that easy. Yeah. Well, not the, yeah, it's even less than that. I mean, it's so yeah. simple, really. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but because of that, people do buy the oil-free pump just because the word oil makes them nervous. So what is your favorite freeze-dried snack? Freeze-dried snack? Mm-hmm. I, I vary, guys. I, I go from thing to thing, but I'll tell you, this freeze-dried smoothie right here. Yeah. So... We freeze dry these smoothies, and this is a raspberry, strawberry, blueberry smoothie. I also do a mango pineapple smoothie that uh-huh. I love freeze dried. Right now, that's my favorite freeze dried snack. This no is it, huh? question. 25 year shelf life, fruit and vegetables, dairy, meat, meals. Okay, Brad, open that up and, and uh, let, us, let us know. Oh, gladly. Let us know what. So uh, that would be my favorite freeze dried snack right now. But I vary, right? I'll do. I'll go through a mango phase or an ice cream phase do, do or a cheesecake phase. <laughs> what do you um, think? It's, okay, folks that are watching on uh, on the video version of the podcast, here it is. I, just like a little, it looks like an hour later back in the day. <laughs> it does look like an hour later, right? doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's funny. And you can't mm. see me because I'm off screen, but I'm like kind of dancing over here because it's amazing. <laughs> so you could mm. add water back to this, right? You can freeze dry your green smoothie or whatever smoothie, your protein shake or whatever, and you can freeze dry it and add water to it and bring it back to fresh, or you can just munch on it like this. Wow. That I could do glass for bears on the mountain side. Yes. Just wow. So how are these like done in trays? Yeah, we have like, uh, we have these little silicone molds. Uh-huh. So people like to freeze dry yogurt for their kids mm-hmm. and applesauce. Yep. They'll freeze dry little smoothies, right? So we have molds. Actually, we've got them over there if you want to grab them. And so you can actually just pour it right into the mold, and then the mold just sits right on the in the freeze dryer, and then it'll come out in a little shape that way mm. just to kind of munch on and snack on. If, if you're looking for it as more of like a snack than a... Mm-hmm. Then something that you rehydrate is like your full green smoothie. Like I'll see people go on trips who will freeze dry really just their smoothie or their protein cool. shake. Well, this is what I'm thinking. And, and just rehydrate like, the protein shake dude, and have a protein shake. <laughs> snacks for the kids, like I absolutely dislike the most. Going in a gas station and like, oh, let's get the snacks for the kids as mm-hmm. we're traveling. Yep. So Here's your solution <laughs> right there. Like mm-hmm. fruits, you know, you make them into a smoothie. Wow. Like, You're not lying. They're awesome. No, huh? those are amazing. That's ridiculous. And you know that it's just, you know, pureed fruit, basically. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's what it is. I've got a mango. I've got a mango one that is so good. It's well, like here, a mango strawberry. There's going to be people listening to this podcast going, you guys are grossing me out eating on the <laughs> microphone. Well, I can hear you chewing. <laughs> here's the thing is, because like in my, I always have, like with my nails, it's funny. And, I, and it, I haven't figured out exactly what causes it, like vitamin deficiency or something. But my nails will always split. Like when I'm on my 10 day backcountry trip, it's always like pack a little bit of collagen or, and I have my, my biotin and stuff and mm-hmm. I'm like smoothie as a snack, dumping the collagen in there. Oh yeah. You're getting that and it's all mixed in. Mm. Yeah. That's a good idea. I don't know. Just in my head, I'm thinking. Or that stealthy nutrition bone mm-hmm. broth. Uh, the bone protein. broth. Exactly. I wonder what that would be like freeze dried. 
Amazing. And a peanut butter smoothie. Amazing. Yeah. It's going to turn out good. Amazing. Has gonna to have be. to try that. So I do like a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of banana. Yeah, because you smuggle in there like like you said, the collagen mm-hmm. and some other stuff too. Mm-hmm. But the bone broth already has that, all those va- nutritional values mm-hmm. in it. Correct. It is, um, hmm, because just, just eating the ice cream here or the smoothie, you could see how palatable it is. Mm-hmm. So you throw that in your backpack. You know, using a tray like this okay. for those that are watching or listening, They're I've like got one a, by one cube. I've got a little silicone, yeah, one by one. It's like an ice tray kind of, but yep. but with smaller, but silicone and with smaller little little cups. And uh, you know, having a bag of that, I think I would enjoy that consumption more than I do drinking the smoothie. Same here. Oh, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. There's something about when you take. You, it's like the pineapple. Why does the pineapple freeze dried? Why do I like it more than the pineapple raw? Like <laughs> <Yeah>. why? <laughs> and this is where the danger comes in. Like a freeze dried going on like psychologically. A, a freeze dried right? peach. Mm-hmm. Those have gotten me into trouble multiple well, times. And I will say, if you've never had because I eat those dried... peaches on Mountain Road where they grow them up there oh, in Fruit yeah. Heights, and like we grab all those because we used to live over there. Yep. And we'll go and we'll buy them from the orchards. Yep. And they are the best tasting peaches on planet Earth. Yes. Probably some in Georgia might disagree. But then you cut those things up and you freeze dry them. You you will eat 20 of them and not realize it. Well, They're just like candy. So good. And if you've never had a freeze-dried peach, if you're sitting there, you have a little bit of water and you throw a freeze-dried peach in your mouth and you yeah. add just a, just a tiny bit of water, <laughs> like... In your mouth, and you have a but fresh peach. That's what we do on the mountain. You you take your little peach slice, yeah. your sliver. Yep. You put it in. You take a little sip of your your water <laughs> bottle, and then you let it rehydrate yep. or reconstitute right in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And you then you just savor it, suck you on just it, enjoy chew it. it, and then you're and you're doing that one bite, one peach section at a time. Yes. You do that with the apple too. Mm-hmm. I also have this theory, like when you just eat it, you don't really know the amount of of liquid that should be added to it and it helps with digestion to make sure that you have the right amount of fluids you know because you eat a lot of dehydrated stuff without enough water to go with it and it's a little harder i think on the that can happen to people on dehydrated food i don't know if that happens with freeze-dried or not because when you dehydrate something and it shrinks and shrivels it it really concentrates the sugars and things yes, like that yeah. a lot more whereas when you freeze dry something it just keeps it the way it was right it doesn't it doesn't shrink and shrivel it and concentrate it as much mm-hmm. um but but you're right it tastes so good but to your point if you had those peaches and you wanted to make a peach cobbler when you got to camp yeah. right mm. you can rehydrate those and you can make <laughs> a gonna, peach cobbler you're gonna get hey, us all fat hey, this is something oh, matt you, you get us all fat so on the mountain. you got certain people that may not like to eat as healthy guess what take a five layer burrito and you put that sucker <laughs> in the freeze dryer <laughs> i know i was thinking about that like our our buddy kyam he'll just he'll br- grab a chick-fil-a sandwich i guarantee he'll throw the yes. whole thing in the freeze dryer <laughs> and then he'll get up there and he'll rehydrate that sucker yep and eat it. Hey, you guys, the goal is, I'm telling you, that the best meal on your adventure was mm-hmm. the meal you had in the backcountry, not the meal when the when the trip ended, right? Mm-hmm. The best, the, that's the yeah. goal is you take food that is so good, not just nutritious, but tastes so good that, that you are loving it. And it's so lightweight, right? When you're on yeah. these two-week adventures that you can haul around steak and potatoes and anything you, you, you made for a barbecue. Yeah. So, yeah. I got to share these with them. My kids. I'm not sharing them with my kids. These pre No, I need to. I, <laughs> I'm kidding. Here's my, I'm already thinking ahead, Matt. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these home. I'm going to have my kids eat them. They're going to be like, oh, we got to make tons of these. They're going to make them and I'm going to take them. And then, and then you got it. <laughs> so I get all this free labor. You get the labor going. I make them think they're going to get to keep most of it, but I'll, I'll at least, the tax will be at least 60% of their their uh, production. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna yeah. have or to. Or that king king yeah. call. My kids the... are a little younger than yours, so this backfires on me because my <laughs> I'll bring them home to my kids and they're like, That's... "Dad, let's make some more." And I'm like, "No, you're supposed to make them, yeah. right? Not yes. me. That's yes. not my job." I'm in that boat as well. <laughs> mine are <laughs> mine are all about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you... They'll they'll get on it and experiment a little bit more. Yeah, we got to do it. We got to do more of this. So, uh, people who are looking for a freeze dryer from Harvest Right, where do they go? 
Well, you can go. You can go to a lot of stores near you to get one. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, harvestrate dot com is a great okay. place. Where can they get information on how to freeze dry meals? Yeah, how to freeze dry meals. So you jump to YouTube and type in freeze dried meals. A hundred videos will come up <laughs> you don't that have people to, have made. You don't yeah. even have to make them. It's just so there. we don't even make those videos because. People who get these freeze dryers love them so much. They become so passionate about it that they just yeah. want to share. And so if you type in freeze dried meals or freeze dried um, fruits and vegetables ice cream sandwiches. or ice cream. Freeze- the first one I found freeze dried chicken was you guys. And uh, this was years ago. And it was a YouTube video that you guys created that had the ice cream sandwiches and um, how to, you know, open the package, but leave them the, kind of in the package and how to, how to do that. Because the trick with, excuse me, the trick with ice cream is you're not, you're never going to dehydrate ice cream because mm-hmm. it'll all melt. Yeah. Right. Because freeze dryer, it's amazing because he, here's your ice cream sandwich and it's, it's literally, it stays in its shape, but it was cold when you put it in. Uh huh. It just yeah. seems like, how yeah, do you do that? Because we'll it better turn on and get going pretty quick before everything melts. Yep. Yeah. You know? no, it, yeah. When people have their first ice cream sandwich freeze dried, they're they're really kind of blown away by just what it is that it's not melting in their hand, but it still looks just like a, a brand new ice cream sandwich. Mm-hmm. So, kind of mm-hmm. to your point, you can you can pick up freeze dryers in a lot of places. You can pick them up at Sportsman's Warehouse or Shields. Mm-hmm. Um, you can pick them up at Home Depot com, and you can pick them up in a lot of places, lots of stores near you. But I would say the best place to pick one up is. We're going to get you guys a link. And if you click that link and go to harvestdry.com, you are going to get the best sale price on a freeze dryer. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you can drop down to a local store and, and, and pick one up, but we'll ship one to you within just a couple of days. And mm-hmm. so the easiest way and the best way to do it is, is to click on that link and, and, and jump to, and that'll take you right to harvestrite.com and you pick one up and, and uh, it'll be at your house in a couple of days. You don't have to go to the store and pick it up and bring it home. Yeah. It'll just show up right on your doorstep. And, and in the following week, you'll be freeze drying just about everything you can think of. So <laughs> I like it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would do. Pretty incredible. Okay. So Well, I think we can wrap this up. You got any questions, Brad? Anything else to throw on? No, I just have all these ideas in my head. I know. <laughs> me too. Me too. We have enough tomatoes, by the way, at our house for like 10 Italian restaurants. <laughs> like my family grows some tomatoes and that whole uh, fresh salsa freeze dried. Oh, so good. Because we have tons of it in jars. Like that's just how we've done it for years is preserving it in jars. And all summer, the my my uh my mom, my wife, they're all like canning and canning and canning. And I'm sitting there going, Well, they make these fresh batches of salsa. Now, why not just freeze it? Oh, you need to freeze dry it. It turns out awesome. And then it's better. Well, yep. folks, because it's not cooked. Don't ask Brian for salsa because it's not going to have much spice because spice kills him. <laughs> and <laughs> it won't right. taste good. There will be saying? no, <laughs> it'll just be onions and, and tomatoes, uh, tomatoes. Some cilantro. Yeah, but we're going to avoid the habanero and then we're going to avoid the cayenne. And all, <laughs> that's all useless. We don't need that. Bring it on. That's all bad for the system. Um, that's hard on the, on the old. On the old digestive track for me, but that's the be- the beauty of having your own, making your own food. Mm-hmm. Exactly, you yeah. get to tailor Brad can it, make it what, the way he exactly. wants. Exactly, right? he can make it gross, and I can make mine good. And and <laughs> and one of the main complaints I had had with a lot of the our we have partners and people we've worked with on freeze dried meals. And my complaint was always, I can add spice or I can add seasoning to a meal, but I can't take it out. Mm. And often, some of my favorite meals were just too much cayenne, too much white pepper, too much too much pepper, period. And I didn't handle that well at all. And so it just ruled out those meals for sure. me. Sure. Mm. And, and you get tired of eating the same five or six things, right? Yep. Yeah. And now... Now that we just kind of bring our own meals, I'd say 50% to 70% of the time we bring our own meals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're able to make them exactly how we want. My wife, my favorite, one of my favorite meals that we do, Suzanne does it, and it's it's like a uh, stew, like an Asian stew. Mm. And um, I'm not sure how she does it, but you just... Add the water and boom, you've got this beef stew broth kind of thing with noodles and it's just 
unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah. and all of that, you just, you just freeze dry it and done. Yep. And it turns know? out perfect. And you guys, this, this is catching on more than you might think, you know, um, we started out, I think, like like I told you guys, with six freeze dryers in a warehouse, and they were forty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. each. Yeah. Um, today, I think we have over three hundred thousand customers around the country who wow. own freeze dryers. Right. So it's pretty cool that more and more people are wanting to enhance their experience. They're wanting to enhance their adventure. Freeze dry mm-hmm. awesome meals for themselves. Um, preserve that game, right? That elk yeah. and that moose and that venison. Even that salmon, I mean, Alaska, so many people in, in Alaska right. buy freeze dryers because the growing season is so mm-hmm, short. Mm-hmm. But also, it's pretty cool to see people wanting to put some food on the shelf yeah. for their family. One right? of them, it just crosses over so well. One of the things I'd like to check into is crab. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. We had so much crab and freezing it, it, just, does, it, it yeah, didn't, didn't do well at all. I wonder how it would if you were to uh, crack it all and uh, probably I bet it's good. I bet it's great. Yeah, my, Go to yeah. YouTube, freeze dried crab. You'll find really? some pretty cool videos that people throw. Again, up that's there. another one of those meats that doesn't freeze well. Well, and I just think mm. the price breakdown, like when you when you're you, not going to can it again. When you no. break it all down, you know, look at how many leftover meals you throw out per year. Yeah. Look how many vegetables, well, that's, and fruits you throw we, out. We have some and, prepper. My cousin and her husband are mm-hmm. just they're insane mm. uh, on the prepping side. And their whole, like half their garage is just all harvest right, freeze dried meals just mm. by the, and all they do is they, they always, every time they cook, they cook a little extra. bit more extra yeah, and then they throw it in the freeze dryer every day. Well, <clears throat> the magic number guys is about 25 to 30 uses on your freeze dryer. So once you've, you've purchased your freeze dryer and used it 25 to 30 times, mm-hmm. it's paid for itself compared to buying freeze dried mm-hmm. food. And so as long as you get it, committed to fire that thing up and start yeah. using it. I mean, and we have customers who have used, who've done thousands of batches in their mm. freeze dryers and made seriously like $100,000 worth of yeah. freeze dried food. But really 25 to 30 uses after you've used it that many times to even just, you could really go and put that machine in the dumpster and you at least got your money out of yeah. it. Well, that makes sense. And yeah. as a price breakdown too, because I know it's it's a, com- a commitment to some people, some families, you know, yeah. I'm like... There are nights when you're busy, you come home from work, you know, mom and dad are both working and the kids and you come home and you're like, I don't want to cook a meal. Let's go out. Well, you can pull that off. And by the time you have driven from your house to where you're going to eat, you can already have that meal rehydrated and yep. yeah. ready to eat. Yep. Yeah. And you just yep. saved the money there. It definitely is easier on the family mm-hmm. uh, to just whip out a freeze dried meal and nobody has to cook. You just go right to it. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's definitely that too. We did that quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's so convenient. That's the same thing with the jarred bear meat. Yeah. It's just it, we tend to eat what's easy and delicious. Yep. yep. And and this gets you there. So very cool. Well, Matt, thanks for having us down here today. We really appreciate it. Folks, if you want to get your hands on a freeze dryer, we'll put a link in the description field yep. of this YouTube video. And uh, you can click that link and uh that helps us out as well helps you guys out and um check it out we'll we'll continue we have a lot of elk and moose to uh, process so we'll start experimenting with that and ryan um lampers and Mm livesey mark livesey are also working on recipes and meals for everybody out there to to learn from their their uh their their work uh trying to make freeze-dried meals and and using the harvest right freeze dryers as well so We'll get a little, we'll, we'll, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And, and we're going to continue talking about it and continue uh, working to to help everybody get yeah, better real at fast. this. Can anybody stop in at Harvest Right or do you guys not really have a storefront or anything? Yeah, you can stop in if you want to at Harvest Right. Really, I think you click that link. Get more I, out of I it. Think, I think you just click that link and you just jump on YouTube for a few yeah, minutes. Yeah. You're going to, yep. you're going to get everything you need. You can come down to Harvest Right and we're in, we're in North Salt Lake and we'd love to see you. But I think you're going to get more out of it just just jumping around online a little bit. And yeah, it's it's just don't make it too complicated. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Pretty yeah, simple. it's pretty slick. And and you know, big big retailers carry them, and 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 that's great. But I really I really do think you click that link and and jump in that way. That's the that's way the go. best way to do it because then it just shows up on your porch. So yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. So. All right. 
Thanks, Matt. Thanks hey, for tuning in, I'm folks. Sure, I'm surprised we didn't do this sooner, by the way. You've had your freeze dryer for a few years <laughs> now, yeah. and you never came down I here. Kept, we didn't jump on, dude. Like, I kept driving by. I'm thinking to myself, you bought this freeze dryer years ago. <laughs> I drive by on the highway, and Ryan finally got his hands on his, and it just been something we've meant to do. Hey, we should call Harvest Right, tell them how much we like their dry, freeze dryer, and talk to them about it, and we just... You're just too busy hunting. You just you get know, caught getting up our in stuff what you're doing. Going. And so, I but I was it. glad that we we got to meet you and and that um, that we're working together on this stuff because we just have a community that needs this. It's just an excellent product. It's an extension of all the things we care about. Uh, people often leave a comment on some video where we've killed a moose that goes viral, right? Because yeah. we have a lot of videos that that might just get 5 million views because they're just a YouTube short of a moose or an Instagram mm-hmm. reel. And uh, comments there can be varied because you have the, oh, yeah. the who knows who sees it. Yep. Like, Half of them are in a foreign language. Yeah. And <laughs> I have to hit the translate and I'm like, oh, they didn't like that one. <laughs> and a lot of time it's uh, people, when they are angry, they're angry because they see you kill something and think you just took the horns or something. Right. You know, and that's not, I mean, a big, big, I mean, probably the primary, if we couldn't keep the meat, we probably wouldn't hunt at all. You know, yeah. right. you can't see a reason for it. Like that's, that's the basis, the foundation for, for the hunting and the food prep. It's, it's what man's oldest try at life hunting, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's just, it's in our DNA. We all do it in one way or another where you use your checkbook at the grocery store. Right. You, you've hunted and killed that day. Just, yep. just, you had someone else do it for you. I feel like, um, the preservation part and the food prep and it being an extension of the rest of what we do is so important because it's one big circle. You know, we go out, we have the adventures, we, we harvest the game, we pack it out on our backs, we, we eat it at home and we have tried really hard to show the, 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 the butchering that we do in the field and the mm. packing and the, right. the food prep when we get home, but we could, we can show a lot more, on the get home part. And Ryan does a pretty dang good Mm -hmm. job of that. Mm -hmm. Ryan does a lot of, he likes to take pictures of his food and you know, he likes to backpack some food. Yeah. (laughs) And he likes to like to, to put food up and then just sit, stare at, sit and stare at it and admire like all the, all the, all the freeze dried uh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. There's a sense of security and, and, and job well done. that I think we all feel, I think it's a human emotion, but yeah, it's it's time to uh, expose this more and, and and talk about it more with our audience. I think um, it's just brilliant. You're it's right. Brilliant. I mean, the adventure is the fun part to watch you guys do. Yeah, but people don't think as much about the before and after mm-hmm. that that goes and, into the adventure that makes it possible for you to do what you do. Right. Well, it's a circle too because we then we go out and we hunt, but then when we when we come home, we process it. When we go back out, we bring what we killed before exactly. in our meals yep. with us and yep. what we grew in our gardens. And it's a it's a holistic way of living that that story is being told, but it could be told better. Yeah, one, one of the most satisfying things as a dad is when I come home and my kids are like, they're so excited to eat. Yeah, that meal. That's really like, cool. It's absolutely, one of my and you things. went out and got it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. One of my favorite things. That's yeah, pretty absolutely. cool. Cool deal. All right, we're gonna wrap this up, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We appreciate that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment in the description field of the YouTube video. We try to respond to all of those uh, as much as we can. Don't DM me. I uh, probably won't get to it, and don't email me because that won't work either. So <laughs> be sure to click the link. And, and yeah, yeah. Click the, if you're going to get a freeze dryer, uh, help us out. Use the link in the description field of our video of this podcast. And uh, thank you for tuning in and stay gritty.